G'day viewers, Oren here. In this video, we'll talk about the Windows Event Log, Event Viewer, and Event Log policies from the perspective of a Windows Server Administrator. Now, the Event Log is one of those meat and potatoes features that we all have a cursory understanding of, but rarely think about in depth. As someone who talks about IT Pro topics, I'm interested in covering the core roles and features that have been around forever, but that we don't give much attention. And whilst the shiny new things get coverage, it's tools like Event Viewer and Event Logs that you need to understand to effectively do your job as an IT operations professional. So what's the Event Log? Well, each Event Log records events that happen on the Windows Server computer. Examining the events in these logs can help you trace activity, respond to events, and keep your systems secure. Configuring these logs properly can help you manage the logs more efficiently and use the information that they provide more effectively. So let's talk about Event Viewer. Event Viewer is going to be the tool that most of you use to interact with your event logs. Event Viewer tracks information in a number of logs, which we generally call the Windows logs. And these Windows logs include the application, security, setup, system, and forwarded events logs. So let's talk about these logs. The application log records events logged by application and services running on the system. Events in this particular log will be either error, warning, or information, depending on the severity of the event. Now, an error is a significant problem, such as maybe you've lost some data. A warning is an event that is not necessarily significant, but might indicate a possible future problem, and an informational event simply describes a successful operation of a program, driver, or service. Now, the security event log is the Windows log that contains security-related events, which are called audit events, and are described as either a failed audit or a successful audit. For example, a user fails to log on to Windows or a user is successfully logged on to Windows. We cover auditing in other topics on this channel. The setup log records events related to installing programs and services on the Windows Server computer. Computers are configured as domain controllers have additional logs displayed in this category. The system log records system events that are sent by Windows and Windows system services and are classified as error, warning, or information using the same schema for error events, warning, and information as before. Error, you really pay attention to. Warning, you might have to pay attention to it in future. And information, well, generally you don't look at those unless you're in a lot of trouble. The forwarded events log is a special log that records events that are forwarded to this computer by other computers. Event log forwarding is built in to Windows Server and allows you to centralize all your event logs on a single computer. It's very basic compared to dedicated telemetry tools like System Center Operations Manager or your favorite third-party alternative. Okay, in addition to these basic logs, there's the application and services logs. Each application or service installed on the computer possibly and generally has its own individual logs. These logs store events from a single application or service rather than events that might have system-wide impact. This category of logs includes four subtypes for which the application or service can provide events. So for each application or service log, there is an admin log, an operational log, an analytic log, and a debug log. So let's talk about what these categories are for. The admin logs record events in admin channels and indicate a problem and a well-defined solution that you can act on. An example of an admin event is that the event occurs when an application failed to connect to a printer. These are, events are either well-documented or have a message associated with them that'll give you direct instructions, well, should at least, unless you have to ask AI to solve it for you, of what you need to do to rectify the problem. The operational event logs in the application logs are events used for analyzing and diagnosing a problem or occurrence. They can be used to trigger tools or tasks based on that problem. An example of an operational event is an event that occurs when a printer is added or removed from a system. Analytic events, events that are found in this channel, help you with performance evaluation and troubleshootings. They've published very high volume, so you should only turn on analytic logs for limited amounts of times when you are trying to diagnose issues. They describe program operation and may indicate problems that you can't 
handle with user intervention. And then there's the debug logs. Now, events in this category are often used only by developers when troubleshooting issues when they're working on building their program. Now, you should note that both analytic and debug logs are hidden and disabled by default. To use these logs, turn on Event Viewer, click the View menu, and select Show Analytic and Debug Logs to make the logs visible. Then select the specific analytic or debug log that you want to enable, and on the Action menu, click Properties. On the Properties dialog, select Enable Logging and click OK. Each of these logs has a tribute, such as maximum log size, access rights for each logs, and retention settings and methods. Each of them can be defined using the appropriate event log section of Group Policy. So let's talk about event log settings. You can configure event log settings in the following locations within Group Policy, Computer Configuration, Administrative Templates, Windows Components, Event Log Service. Subordinate folders exist for the following event logs by default, the Application Log, the Security Log, the Setup Log, and the System Log. The same set of policy settings is available for each event log. The setup folder has an additional policy setting that allows logging to be turned on. The next bit of the talk is going to describe the options and issues for configuring event log settings for better system management and security. Okay, so maximum log size. The maximum log size policy setting specifies the maximum size of the log files. All individual settings may be specified for the application security setup and system event log channels. Now, the interface in the Local Group Policy Editor and the Microsoft Management Console View Snap-in allow you to enter values as large as 2 terabytes. If this setting is not configured and you stick with the default, event logs have a default maximum size of 20 megabytes. Although there's no simple equation to determine the best log size for a particular server, you can determine a reasonable size by multiplying the average event size by the average number of events per month assuming that you do back your logs up on a monthly schedule. The average event takes about 500 bytes within each log, and the log file sizes must be in multiples of 64 kilobytes. You can estimate the average number of events that are generated each day for each log in your organization, and you could then generate a good size for each type of log file. To give you an example, if your server is generating 5,000 events per day in its security log, and you want to ensure that you at least have four weeks of data available at all times, you can figure the size of your log to about 70 meg. Check the servers occasionally over the four, following four weeks to verify that your calculations are in the right ballpark and the logs retain enough events for your particular needs. Event log size and wrapping should be defined to match your business and security requirements. You can set the maximum log size between 1024 bytes and 2 terabytes if you're feeling relaxed about the amount of storage that you actually want to allocate to your logs. Now, Microsoft's general recommendation is to configure your event log size at about 4 gig. So not the 20 meg by default, 4 gig. Now, the approximate maximum event per second that the event log is capable of recording is about 300,000. From a practical perspective, if you're getting log files that big, you really should be using a tool like Azure Monitor or System Center Operations Manager to deal with your event data. The controller location of the log policy allows you to configure where your event logs are written. Now, by default, event logs are located in the Windows Directory System32 WinEvent Logs folder, which is obviously on your operating system drive. You can move these logs manually or by using policy. To move the event logs to a specified folder, open the event viewer, right click the log that you want to configure, select properties and in the log path box, type the desired location for the event log and then select OK. This change will occur immediately. Events that were already logged, however, will still be located in the original location. If you relocate the event logs to a disk that's not present or have becomes unavailable, those events are lost and it doesn't default or fall back to its original location. If you significantly increase the number of objects to audit in your organization and you've enabled the audit shutdown system immediately, if unable to log security audit setting, there's a risk that the security log will reach its capacity and force your computer to shut down. 
If such a shutdown occurs, the computer will be unusable until an administrator logs on and clears the security log. So to prevent such a shutdown, you disable the audit shutdown system immediately if you are unable to log security event audits settings. In terms of log access policies, the following log access rights are enforced. Application and setup logs, all authenticated users can write, clear and read the log. For the system logs, only system software and administrators can write or clear the log. Any authenticated user can read events from it. For the security log, only system software and administrators can read or clear the log. The log access policy setting determines which accounts have access to the log files and what usage rights are granted. Individual settings may be specified for each of the application, security, setup and system event log channels. This policy requires you to use security descriptor definition language, SDDL, to identify the security principles rather than just selecting a user or group, which really means it's a lot more cumbersome and you'd really, really, really want to have a good reason to go and change it from the default. The control event log behavior when the log file reaches its maximum size policy settings controls event log behavior when the log file reaches its maximum size. If you turn on this setting and the retain old events policy setting is enabled, the event log file is automatically closed and renamed when it's full. A new file is then started. When this policy setting is disabled and if a log file reaches its maximum size, new events will overwrite old events in the same log file. If this policy setting is enabled, and a log file reaches its maximum size and the retain old events policy is not enabled, new events are not written to the log and are simply lost. The backup log automatically when full policy controls event log behavior when the log file reaches its maximum size and takes effect only if the retain old events policy setting is enabled. If you enable this policy setting and the retain old events policy setting is enabled, the event log file is automatically closed and renamed when it is full. A new file started. If you disable the policy setting and the retain old events policy setting is enabled, new events are discarded and the old events are retained. When this policy setting is not configured and the retain old events policy setting is enabled, new events are discarded and the old events are retained you should archive your logs to an external location at scheduled intervals. Get them off the server. Ensure that your maximum log file size is large enough to accommodate your interval. Or use a monitoring solution that ingests and archives logs to an external location. The event logs record events that happen on the computer. Examining the events in these logs can help you trace activity, respond to events and keep your system secure. Configuring these logs properly can help you manage the logs more efficiently and use the information that they provide more effectively. Ensure that you configure your log file policies so that log file size is appropriate and that important event log data is not overwritten or goes unlogged. If it's not recorded, it's very hard to know that it's happened unless you've seen it. I hope you found this video informative. If you've got a topic you'd like me to cover, drop it in the comments below. Thank you very much for your attention. I'll see you in the next video.